Hello and welcome back to Sci-Tie Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple and very useful Arduino Nano Photo Shield, which uses only a few simple parts. This device has some very useful features, such as an on and off switch, and is actually smaller than an Arduino Uno, and it actually functions the exact same way as an Arduino Uno. Now, let's go into some of this project, and let's get started. <laughs> And these are the items that you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need is an Arduino Nano, four female header pins, a flat red LED, a perf board, a 1K on resistor, a slide switch, and a DC input jack. Now let's go to the symbol of this project and let's get started. First, what I'm going to do is take the Arduino Nano and the female header jacks connect it to the male connectors of the Arduino Nano. Next, take the Arduino Nano and place it into the perf board. Place it in where there's enough space to be able to put more female header pins on the sides. Solder it into place. Solder in one pin so that way you can be melt the solder while pushing on the circuit so that way you can be flush with the board. And now repeat the same process on the opposite corner. And there, the circuit is now flush with the board. Next, solder in all the pins in place. And there we go, all of the pins are now soldered into place. Now you can pull out the Arduino Nano and the female header pins are stayed in place and they're nice and straight as well. Next, take two more female header pins, put some super glue on these female header pins, and then take the other female header pins and place it right next to the super glue part. Press it down, hold it in place and wait for it to cure. Doing this will allow it to stay in place better, so it's easier to solder into place. And there we go, everything is glued into place. Next, what you need to do is solder in all of the pins, and then solder bridge all the pins together. And there we go, soldered into place. And now it's time to take these pliers, bend the leads over, so then that way it's easier to solder bridge together. And now it's time to solder bridge everything together. And there, it should look just like this. Next, what I'm going to do is take a continuity tester and make sure all of the solder bridging is done properly. And there, everything is solder bridged correctly. Next, what I need to do is take the DC input jack and place it into this perf board. I want to place it right here. And I want to take this drill and drill one of these holes a little bit bigger, so then that way I can solder it into place easier. And then we go, drilled out, and now I can take the DC input jack and place it into the hole. And as you can see, it's a perfect fit. Next, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of super glue to glue down the DC input jack so it stays in better and make it easier to solder. And there we go, it is now glued into place. Next, what I want to do is take the Arduino Nano, 
And as you can see where it says VIN and ground, which is voltage input and ground, I want to place it into the circuit, just like this. And I want to make sure that the voltage input and ground connects to the DC input jack. Next, what I need to do is solder in the DC input jack and connect them over to the voltage input and the ground pins of the Arduino Nano. I'm going to take these two wires, solder the positive over to the positive and connect it to the voltage input and the ground over to the ground pin. Next, I'm going to take this battery pack and make a quick test by plugging it in. And I'll plug in the Arduino Nano. And there, as you can see, it works. Oh, as you can see, I didn't solder in that positive pin very well. Add more solder onto this pin. And there, now it should work. Perfect. This is why you do tests, to make sure everything is soldered correctly. Next, I'm going to take this 1K ohm resistor and place it right here onto the perf board. Take the two leads, bend them over, solder them into place. Next, I'm going to take this one lead and bend it over to the positive input. Place a little bit of solder right here so it stays in place better. And now bend the lead over to the voltage input. And now solder it into place. Next, I'm going to take this light switch and remove this pin. I want to place it right here next to the 1K ohm resistor. I'm going to take this drill and drill out these holes to make them a little bit bigger so that way I can fit in this light switch. And there we go. And now take this light switch, place it in. All those are a little bit too big, but that's okay. Solder it in the light switch. Put some super glue onto the light switch and glue it to the female header pins. And now I'm going to take the 1K ohm resistor and solder it to one of the pins of this light switch. Cut off the excess. Next, I'm going to take this LED and place it right here next to the light switch, where that side's the anode and that side's the cathode. Anode goes right next to the light switch, and the cathode will go to ground. Place it in. Bend over the anode over to the light switch and the cathode over to the opposite direction. Solder it into place. Solder in the anode over to the light switch. Cut off the excess. Cut off the excess of the cathode. And now take this negative wire and solder it to the ground over to the cathode. And there we go, the cathode is now grounded. Make a quick test. And as you can see, it turns on. And the switch turns it on and off, on and off. And I'll take the Arduino Nano and place it into the circuit. And as you can see, it stays on even though the LED is off. So what I need to do is do some modification to the circuit. The next modification is to take another slide switch and carefully glue it next to the other slide switch. Take some super glue and put it on the first slide switch, a careful amount so that way you don't glue the switch in place. And then glue the two switches together, make sure they're nice and even and level so that way you can be able to turn both the switches on and off together. And now the idea is make both the switches turn on at the same time. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this bridge wire and I want to attach it and put it through both of them. So then that way they're both locked together and I can be able to 
push it and they both close. And how I'm going to do that is take this drill and just drill through carefully. Next, I'm going to take this bridge wire and put it between the two switches. Take some super glue and glue, glue it into place. Move it back and forth so that way there's glue inside of the holes. And then that way that bridge wire is glued into place. Spray some activator and as you can see, the bridge wire doesn't move so it's glued into place. Cut off the excess. Now I can turn both the switches on and off. Next I'm going to solder tin the new switch. Next I'm going to desolder the positive wire that connects to the input voltage. And completely remove the wire and put in a longer wire. Solder it to the voltage input of the Arduino Nano and then solder it to the new switch. And I'll take another wire and solder it to this new switch. And then solder it to the input voltage positive. And there you have it. The circuit is now complete. Let's go test it out. Plug it in. And there, the LED turns on. And now the LED turns off. On. Off. Perfect. Now let's test it with the Arduino Nano. Take the Arduino Nano, plug it into the circuit. And as you can see, the Arduino Nano is off. And now turn on the switch. Everything should turn on. LED and the Arduino Nano. And there, it works. The whole purpose of this design is to have something that's exactly like an Arduino Uno. Which, as you can see, it's much smaller. And I want it to have a power source, so I can plug it in. I can do to the Arduino now, and it powers it on, but I can only reset it so there's no switch to turn it off. It stays on as long as you have it plugged in. Of course, yeah, you can do that and then put it in uh, like that, but I find it a little bit annoying, so I prefer the idea of being able to plug it in and it stays off or turn it on and off. And that way I can just have it together, mount it on a device or whatever, and it can be prototyped, and I don't want it to be on without having to unplug it. What if I can't access the plug, or I hotwired the wires directly to it? Or what if I unplugged? What if I plug it in a position where it's blocked, and I don't want to have to go and unscrew, pull out a panel or whatever, and then go and unplug it? I can just keep it plugged in, seal it up, and then if I wanted to, I can just turn it on, and then it'll turn on and turn off. Instead of having to pull this out too, or unplug here, it can just be an option where I can turn it on and off without pulling the Arduino Nano or unplugging it. So that way I have the option to be able to power it. Which I find much better. What's great about this design is I have these headers. So I can be able to now have the Arduino Nano to be prototyped. I can just plug in a jumper cable here and then plug it into something and it'll be very useful. I can just plug it in and plug into a perf board to power an LED or something like that without having to take the without having to take the Arduino Nano and sticking onto a breadboard, which is actually hard to pull an Arduino Nano out of a breadboard. This is a lot easier because I can just simply sit it like that. Of course I don't have to use this power source, I can always attach uh, the bin that is, that's on here directly to the breadboard or and then attach a power supply to it or attach the jumper cable to the negative rail which is connected to ground and then can take another jumper cable and connect to say 3 volts or 5 volts connect to 3 volts right here and then just connect it to a positive rail and then that way you can power the Arduino Nano so yeah, 
as an option, so I can be able to prototype it. The same way I can be able to prototype it with using an Arduino Uno, where I can attach jumper cables directly here and then connect them into the breadboard like that. Now, the Arduino Nano can do the same as an Arduino Uno with using this proto shield that has an extra feature to being able to turn on and off. Now, let's go ahead and test out its features. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test it out. I have right here an LED, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect cathode to the negative rail, anode to the positive rail. I'm gonna connect the anode over the pin 13. jumper cable, connecting ground, right here, to ground. There we go, it should look just like this. And now, I can go ahead and power it with the, with the battery pack. Turn on the switch. And there, it works. can see it works and of course I can always turn it off and it turns off everything turn it on turns on everything go ahead and connect another jumper cable connect it to ground and then take another jumper cable and connect that over to 5 volts volts, and I'll connect it to my lab bench power supply that is set at 5 volts, connect it to these cables, and there, as you can see, it works. As you can see, you can use it exactly the same way as you would use an Arduino Nano, but in the Arduino Nano version, One more thing, remove, remove all these cables, I can also take the LED, connect the anode directly to pin 13, there we go, just like that, take a jumper cable, connect it to ground, just like that. And it will also still work by connecting it by USB. Now take the negative jumper cable and touch the cathode. As you can see, that still works. Now, the interesting thing is, yes, once I have it connected to a power source right here, same for the 5 volt power source over here from the lab bench power supply, these switches are completely useless. Yes, the LED does turn on, but it doesn't turn it off. However, as you can see, it still works in the way that I want. I wanted to use a device that is similar to an Arduino Uno, but in an Arduino Nano form. And this actually is useful to use for smaller projects and to use it for as an experiment because I wanted to do this mainly for fun. And there you have it. Now you know to make your very own Arduino Nano on a proto board to be able to use it the exact same way as our Arduino Uno. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTechTech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, click on the bell icon to be notified of future SciTechTech videos. To the next tech. Goodbye.